Hello everyone and welcome to episode 11 of our Student Siege Snap series. Today we will be doing um, making computers do math and we will be working with uh, the mod function and other functions as well. To begin the mod function is rather simple. Uh, if you remember from elementary school or middle school, um, remainders. You divide one number by another number and you get a remainder. 15 for example divided by 3. The remainder would be 0 because 15 divided by 3 is 5. Let's say for example 16 divided by 3. What would the remainder be? 1. That's what the mod function does. It tells us the remainder. So let's say 15 divided by 3. Mod would be 0. 16 divided by 3. Mod would be 1. This function is extremely useful for making um, operators or other functions uh, revolving prime numbers, even and odd numbers, and just numbers in general. So, first we'll be doing, uh, what we're going to make on our own operator is this number divisible by that number. And it's going to say if it's true, or if it's going to say if it's false. It's pretty simple. So what we first do is we go to operators, the green tab, right, and we make our own block. Now we're going to be making a predicate. And this predicate, we're going to name it is to start. Right. Next, we're going to be adding here. Now this feature allows us to create another input. And our input is going to be a number. Next is going to be title text. We're just going to make it divisible by. And the input is also going to be a number. And that out of the question mark at the end. As you can see, this is how it's going to look like. Now, what we report is we take the mod function. And before we put it in there, we need to put it into an equals. And then we put a true statement here. And then we insert that into the report. Basically, this is saying if we put this number in here. Oops, sorry, not. We do not put a true statement in here, sorry. We instead we put if it's equal to zero. Okay, sorry about that. Let me explain. If the first number that we put in mod 2 of the second number. For example, 15 divided by 3. It's divisible, right? So the mod is 0. And it will report this if this is true. You'll see what I mean in a second. 15, 15 divided by 3, for example. It's true. The report function basically reports if something is true or false. It's that simple. Well, let's say if it's 16 divided by 3. False. 17 divided by 3. False. 19 divided by 3. False. And now that we got this great operator available here, we can use this in other functions later on. Alright, so now what we'll be doing is we will be making another two operators. Okay? So these two operators are going to be if checking if the number is even or if the number is odd. Very, very simple stuff. So what we do is we click make a block right and now we want it to be let's say it's uh, still a predicate all right let's type in even and we'll make another one odd I'll do these both at the same time because they're very similar in nature just one change between them and now we basically do the input name again, the like last time we select number, right? And we select, and we can just type in number. And we can do the same here. Number. Now see, I can name these two the exact same thing, this variable right here, because they're local variables. 
They're script variables, they're not global, meaning that they will only exist in this block and nowhere outside of it. Alright, so this one will be even number and this is odd number. Now we use our wonderful function that we made here in both. So right click to duplicate, right? And basically it's going to report if this number is divisible by 2. And if this number divisible by 2 is not a that simple for example 15 is it even oh nope. 16 even yes sir odd for example 20 nope 21 true very simple here what basically what's going on is our old right operator is saying is this number divisible by 2 if it is divisible by 2 it's even because any number divisible by 2 is even correct so, with some exceptions of course, but mainly, right? And it will report if this is true, because this, since it's a predicate, right? It's just going to say if it's true, sorry, it doesn't give us an error because it's not connected, but it would basically say if it's true or false. And the report just reports if this is true or false. Same goes here. The only thing is this is just the opposite of this, because it's odd. So that's all you have to do, really. And there you go. That's how you make even and odd blocks and now from there what we'll be doing is I will be showing you how to do libraries so libraries are pretty simple right like I said before these are there's roughly a bunch of libraries in snap that already exist we'll be making our own libraries by exporting blocks so if you click export blocks you can use these blocks in other programs which is amazing if you don't want to start, uh, if, if you don't want to remake these blocks in another project, or you have like 15 different projects that use the same kind of blocks, you can just export them. Okay, and it will export them here as a .xml file. Now, you, to import these blocks, you click Import, and then you go to EXP Blocks, right? And it will import those blocks back in. That simple. Now, to import these blocks, what you do is you click import, it would open up your directory, and you just click on the file and it would import these blocks in. That simple. Next, what we'll be doing is making the number of divisors predicate, which will tell us how many divisors a number has. Alright, so making the number of dividers report is going to be a bit tricky, but definitely doable. So first we make uh, a reporter number of divisors. I put the input name, which should be a number, and would be the number of divisors. Okay, now that we have this set up, we will be using the for function, which basically serves as for each number from this number to that number, do this. Right? That it's it's that simple. We'll be using that. And we'll be using our is divisible by is blank divisible by blank. And we will also be using lists. So let's grab a list. Oops. Let's grab a set. And we will grab a variable, which I made list, right? So now that we have this, it sh we should be able to build it. So what this does is I already explained it, right? So we'll be attaching this here, and then we'll be attaching this, and there beginning. We initialize our variables in the beginning, and our report block always has to be at the end. Notice how it has no spike or uh, Lego piece at the very bottom. So what we're going to report, right, is the length of this list because we just want the number of the divisors not the divisors themselves okay that's the, fin the end is done next what we're going to do is we're going to set list one to a list 
the variable tolus because we can do that in snap which is pretty nifty sorry about the background noise and now we're going to say for i we can change i to let's say num for example for num we want the n to be oh my bad this should not be named devices this should be named input all right that's good okay for num equals one to the number of inputs right we add we need an if function as well because an if function takes a predicate if our number our input is divisible by the number we add the number to our list all right now this might seem pretty complicated but overall it's pretty easy to understand right let's test it out first before we do anything let's say 48 well, I know 48 has 10 divisors great our function works okay to break it down what we first did was we had a variable which I already pre-made and I initialized that variable by setting it to a list next what I did was I made a for function I named this num instead of i you can name it whatever you want it doesn't matter for num equals one to input our range that our end is our input and our beginning is our one you can't do zero as you know not a divisor so you can't use zero and then in this for we put another function if we use our old function is if, if our input the number we put in 48 is divisible by the number let's say it starts one it's going to add this number to the list okay one is a divisor continue it's going to go to two it always goes by ones so you're going to go to two if 48 is divisible by two add it to the list we added two to the list three and so forth and then it just reports the length of this list because see if i did just if i clicked on the list it will say all the numbers that are divisors of 40 but we just want the length so we put that in our reporter block and there we have it number of divisors list now bjc advises we use keep uh, i find this much easier but if you figure out how to do it with keep go ahead now we're going to making max and min operators. Let's create another block. And basically it's going to be saying the maximum between two numbers. So maximum input name would be num1. And oh num2. Now these are numbers so we have to specify it and we need an of here. Now at the same time let's make a minimum because it's going to function almost identical to odd and even basically in pairs. Mixing of num1 and num2 and as you can see if it's a num it's going to be a pound symbol right here for a number all right now from here we basically we there is another function we can use it's actually very useful it's this reporter right here usually they're green but I'm not green reporters can be green usually they are rounded off on the edges predicates are diagonal shaped like that triangle shaped edges and this function basically saves us a lot of time we put this function in here and here it's basically a compressed if then 
uh, if else function into a reporter. So basically it's going to report if and what we're going to do is if our num1 is greater than our num2 then we say then we report num1 because it's maximum we want the bigger of the two numbers. Now since we want the bigger of two numbers then num1 right if this isn't true if num1 is actually less than num2 then we still want the bigger number right so it has to be num2 and as you put it in you see maximum let's say 5 and 11 it's going to display 11 every time now we want the, it's going to do the exact same thing here so we can duplicate this here the only thing is right we put we swap these and it would work the same well not the same but it would work in how we want it to work it would say if this number is greater than this number then it would display num2 which should be the lower number if this is not true then it will display num1 and now we should be done so let's say maximum of 11 and 5 5 minimum of 11 and 5 5 Maximum of 5 and 11, it will work with any number. And so we have it. So for the rest of this video, we will be building four separate reporters. Our first reporter is going to be a uh, sum from one number to another. For example, sum of all the numbers from 10 to 12. Sum of all the numbers from 1 to 10. All right? And I'll be showing you how to do that right now. So first, let's make... So let me get rid of this one. This was me testing it out before. Let's make a new one. Sum from our first number, let's say num1, to our second number, let's call it num2. Alright. We have to set these as lists, obviously. So, sorry, not lists as numbers because we're adding numbers lists is later all right so we set these as numbers now this is what I did I set up a script variable and I named it list two all right so I want to make a list two and I'll this is where I'm gonna store all my numbers prior to adding them up now, what I did, you always have to initialize, right? You set list2 to list. Now that we got it initialized, grab the for function again. And I'll grab the add function again. And I'll grab our very last function, the combine function, with operator. Okay. So, now what we do. We do 4i from num1 to num2, because that's our range. From this range to this range, add i to our list. So far, so good. For each number between, well, for each number from num1 to num2, add the number to the list. We got that. So now we're going to have a list full of these numbers. Now what we do in the report is we combine this list, we collapse, basically we collapse it, right? So we collapse this list using addition. That's basically it. That's what this function does. You combine this list using addition, you can also combine it using other operators, which we will be doing in a second. And as a result, you're going to get a nice sum from blank to blank. So let's say sum from 4 to 6 is 15. Sum from 4 to 10, 49. So far, so good. That's our sum block. Now, let's make, we're going to make three list operators, and then we shall be done. Now, we go to variables. Let's make reporter. We're going to be lists. And we're going to say, the we're gonna, first we're going to do the maximum of list. 
We're gonna find the mo biggest number in the list. So this is going to be list, and you guessed it, we're going to be using our maximum function. What we simply do is we, we grab the combine function, we combine the list that we inputted using the maximum function, and we report that. That's it. I know it might have been that I sped through that, but that's really it. Take our maximum function, which we did earlier, right? It just takes the maximum of two numbers, and it's just gonna run, this function is gonna run through, and it's gonna pick the biggest number. So, we go list one, we can test it out. 48, list one is our old list, which lists the numbers from the divisors. So there you go. Now, let's gonna move on to our next function. The next function is going to be sum of list. So, we're gonna make a block sum of list our input name list it's going to be a list and it's same thing we use the combine function so let's duplicate the combine function combine list using instead of maximum we simply you guessed it use addition there we go sum of list duplicate this list is our default Oh yeah, sum of list 124, the maximum list is 48. And our last but not least function would be the average of the list. So we're gonna go and make one more. Average of list, use a reporter block. This one requires a bit more thinking, but it's still very easy. Same steps. We're going to first grab the combine reporter. Actually, no, we don't use the combine reporter here. We use the our sum of list reporter, and we use our not our but the default length of list reporter right here. And basically, you know what? How to find an average of a list, right? Or average of any group of numbers. Add them all up and divide them by the number that there is. So here we're going to say let's insert this here. We're going to say uh, the sum of the list divided by the length of the list would give us our average. There you have it. Those are our three reporters. Feel free to use them. And as you can see, that concludes our video. So the priority of this video really was making math libraries, right? So what I would do now is I would export all these blocks that we made and I would just store them on the computer or your drive or anywhere, really. And you can use these in future projects hint hint and yeah so you don't have to make him again that concludes this video hope this helped uh have a great day everybody